Okay, so just a reminder, everybody, I'm Paul Hieronymus. I'm your vice chairman of the Ohio Distance Learning Association. And I uh, just want to remind people that we do have a change in our membership structure that you are able to join as a participant, uh, being able to get updates from our content providers and from the general membership of our group. So that when, we, when we're posting local collaborations or uh, professional developments like these, you can be able to be on the receiving end of those pieces. Just follow the bit.ly link on the bottom of our page here, which is just bit.ly slash Ohio DOA dash member. Also remind people of our, our, our partnership with the Management Council. They did a little heavy lifting, but we're happy to help promote it as much as humanly possible. And that is our statewide license with Zoom, which is way cool. You can get a pro version of Zoom for $10. That's, that's right, $10. You can get large ca um, conference capabilities. All the recordings allow you to record in the cloud, cloud because they are pooled. Uh, we have CRCs included, so you can connect to anybody. It doesn't have to be just a Zoom client. And uh, also access to support from Zoom, which is way crazy. Um, also, this month, at the end of this month, which is rapidly approaching, is the closeout of our panel uh, sale from CDWG, where you can be able to purchase a, an interactive panel from them for a huge discounted right, uh, price, but the Zoom room price is also discounted as well. So those are some great things that are available for, for people in the great state of Ohio. So now that I've got my pro version of Zoom, what am I going to do with it? Where do I find content? Is there anyone that could help? You know what there is, Paul. Hi, everyone. My name is Tammy Maureen. I'm with the Center for Interactive Learning and Collaboration, known as CILC. And what we do is we're considered a match.com for educators like yourself to connect to content providers from around the world who provide virtual field trips and also for you to find a fellow educator in a classroom to do a collaboration with. So I'm going to kind of take at this time, if Paul's ready for me to take over, I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, the website and what we have to offer. And I'll be going back and forth between a Google presentation and the actual um, website. So I'm gonna go ahead and share this up on the screen for everyone to see. We'll start at the very top, show our presentation. So stop searching for remote content, find it with CILC. So just to give you all an idea, um, my name is Tammy Mooring. Like I said, I am um, the content provider liaison at CILC. It's a fancy title, but what it really means is that my job is to work with 150 plus content providers from around the world, um, helping them connect to educators like yourself um, for them to, for you to connect them for distance learning programming that they have to offer. So today what we're going to do is we're going to figure find out who CILC is. We're gonna jump over to our website and you find out about our services. We're gonna talk about using the website and creating your own um, membership, how you can book those programs, and then we're gonna open it up for questions and discussion. So the first thing I wanna say is who is CILC? Like I said, we consider ourselves a match.com between educators and live interactive content. We have actually over 1,900 um, virtual field trips from our 150 plus content providers from around the world. All of our programs are aligned to standards and we have over 55,000 global members that are part of CILC like yourselves. We've been around for 25 years and since that time, we have actually had over 3 million people participate in an interactive learning program with us, which is amazing to think about that. And those 3 million people have participated in over 98,000 learning experiences. So that's anyone from pre-K to junior high, high school, and even beyond that. So at this time, I want to kind of talk about the site, we're gonna dive into it. So the first thing that most people go to us for is virtual field trips. How can I use my ProZoom account to connect to someone out there that has, a, who is an expert in the field that I am not in the classroom? Or how can I expand my curriculum and make it a little more in depth? 
So like I said, we have over 100 and, or 1,900 programs from over 180 content providers. And if we go to the website at this time, so I'm just gonna pop this away. I got, got rid of the screen there for a second, but I'll pop it back up. I'll go right here actually. So gosh, I'm gonna do a quick stop share. This is not how you operate Zoom. Paul is much better than I am. <laughs> So the first thing I want to mention is that CILC is absolutely free to our educators. So the first thing you'll do is, if you were to go to the CILC website, I'll actually go ahead and log out. It'll say join now for free. I'm gonna log in. So I'll put in my credentials. And when you become a member, it is actually customized to your wants and needs. So one of the first things I tell um, members to do is we send out a newsletter every Sunday um, that tells you the latest and greatest programs we have on our website. And so you are not a second grade teacher finding out about high school programs that you probably could care less about, or you're a high school teacher that doesn't want to know about fifth grade social studies programs when you're a science teacher in high school. You can narrow that newsletter down to fit your needs a lot better. So you're going to actually go to my dashboard at the very top of the page. You're going to go under edit profile and on this little tab right here, it says preferences. And what it does is it allows you to choose um, your audiences that you're looking for when it comes to those virtual field trips. So since I work with all the schools out there, I leave mine all open so I can see everything that's going on on CILC and if you're a tech coordinator or you're helping your fellow, your lead teacher, you might wanna leave it open. But as an example, with a second grader or high school teacher, you would probably wanna narrow it down to what fits your needs a little bit more and also your subject matters and then hit submit. And that way when that newsletter comes every Sunday, it's tailored to your needs. But now that we've got the newsletter figured out, let's jump back in actually to where I can find content on the CILC website. You can also, you can go right here and hit search for programs and type it into a Google search, or you can go under interactive content and find programs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for some programming that we have on our website. And one of the topics that comes up a lot from teachers is World War II. So if I hit go right now, it's gonna search all of the programs on our website through all the content providers, so hit go. And at the bottom, it's gonna go ahead and lay it out what programs I have on the website. And it's kind of like a Google search. You'll see right away that there's a program from the National World War II Museum, Manhattan School of Music has another program, the 12th Armored Division Memorial Museum, and you can start to go down and look at the programs that are available based on your search. Now, a lot of times people look at this and they go, oh, well, wow, there's 39 pages, there's 10 programs per page, it's 3,900 programs. How am I gonna even know which ones are the best? So there's a couple of clues to help you out as an educator. One of them is you can go back up here and narrow it down a little bit more and say World War II 10th grade or high school. Give it, narrow it down to your grade level in which you're connecting with. Or you can also look over to the right here. And on the right side, you'll see a star and a, you may see a star and a thumbs up and a CILC Pinnacle Award. And after every program that takes place on the CILC website, we send out an evaluation. Our members fill that out and that data um, helps us determine what are the best programs on the website. So if you see a thumbs up, that means that the educators were asked a question that said, would you recommend this program to others? And they said, yes. And if there's a star, that means they overwhelmingly agreed with that statement. Actually, if you hover the mouse above it, you'll see that it's recommended by 100% of participating educators that completed this evaluation. So you know for sure that this is a really good program. And then also off to the side here is a Pinnacle Award. So at the end of the school year on June 30th, 
CILC takes all those evaluations that have been brought in throughout the year and we tally up the scores and we give our top pinnacle, our top content providers a pinnacle award. And in order for them to get that pinnacle award, they have to have at least a 95% score at the end of the year. So think about kind of how hard it is to maintain a straight A or 95% or above. That's what they're striving for. So every year we give them, um, it can vary the number that get it, but that is another way to look to see who's the best. So if we wanted to take this program from the World War II Museum, or we thought it interested us a little bit, we would click on it. You find a little bit more information about it in depth. You also may see over to the side here on some of the programs that it has a seal. And what CILC did is this last year we went through and we laid out what do we value on CILC for our educators. And we listened to what they're looking for in education and what they're striving for. And we walked away with four things we value. One of them is diversity. So we look for programs that are diverse perspective. We look for a global programming. We want to have you be expanding beyond the four walls that you're in. And we're looking for an authentic experience for you as an educator. And then if you were a lifelong learner community, that was for the 55 plus, you won't have to worry about that. But as you can see, this program here has been given all four seals. It's one of our top programs on CILC for that. It's been known to have an authentic experience and give a global and diverse perspective. So we would scroll down, we'd be able to see that this program is $100. If you're a premium member, it would be $80. It would give a little bit more information about the format, the objectives your students would be walking away, and of course the standard in which it would hit. And if you wanted this program, you could right away go ahead and click book it and be able to put in the information you have. Um, so I'm not gonna go full, all the way through and book the program, but I do wanna show you a couple of things to think about. So the first thing it's gonna do is ask the person to receive the materials. So if you are a tech coordinator, you would put in the teacher's name, or if you want them to contact you directly instead of working with the teacher, you can put your name information in. I'll put my information. Next step, is I can request as an individual member or request with a site with a pin. So 90% of you will fall under this category right here. You can request as an individual. But if your school is really going to get into distance learning and you want to kind of monitor what's going on, you would want to use a pin. And what we would do is we would set up a site for your school and all the teachers, they would click on this little button right here and they would choose their school through the drop down menu. So I'm gonna choose my school right here, Tammy Mori. And I may not be in charge of the purse strings as that teacher, but I could check this little box right here and it would forward my request onto the person in charge of that site who would be able then to say yes or no, you can take that program based on our budget or yes or no, you can do that program on that date or time because I'm gonna be there in case something happens. But with Zoom, you hardly have any issues. Um, so I'm gonna click next step and I'm gonna forward it on to the head person. And also you'll notice right here, it's in tell me my time zone. So I'm in a central time zone. You guys are in the Eastern time zone. So when I put in my programming, I'm gonna put everything in my time zone. Um, so I'll put in my dates and times that work for me. And we usually suggest Working, um, giving at least a two week notice to those content providers um, and providing two dates and times that would work for you as an educator. What's another great thing about using a site is if you are in charge of that budget, you don't wanna work with the teachers and ask them what's their schedule and write down all those times and go back and forth in the emails. Those teachers know when they're free and are able to do that programming. So they can put the time, dates and times in and they could forward it on to you for the final approval. You'll check your grade boxes, put the number of participants in. Most of these programs are designed for a classroom size. So if you are going to, uh, if you have three classrooms of social studies, you would have to book this program three times um, over with that. Um, if cost is ever an issue with that, definitely reach out to the content provider and say, I really want all three of my classrooms to take this program with you 
Um, do you have a way for us to maybe combine them together to save on costs or can we give a discount if I book three of them in a day with you? And most content providers will work with you to find a way to get you in their studio and connected with them. So once I'm done with this, I would hit grade level, I'm gonna put in 50, 30 students are connecting. I'm gonna say as a teacher, I always recommend filling this part out. Any additional information, we are using this as a kickoff to our unit on World War, World War II. Just so they can kind of give a little more idea um, of how they can address you. Maybe they're not going to go in depth as if your students were using this at the end of the project. I'm going to hit next step. It's going to ask me how I'm going to connect. You will all hit Zoom and then you'll submit a request. And that request will give, send it in an email out to the content provider and send you an email back for verification for that. So I'm not gonna submit it in, but I will go back to that search and kind of show you a couple of different things to think about. Um, if you want to, you can always narrow your search down by a content provider. So you could click on one. So in Ohio, you have many great content providers, including like COSI Columbus. You could just choose them from the drop down menu and you'd be able to scroll down and see all the programming that they have available on the CILC website. So that's another way to do it. Um, you could also um, check if you're a premium member, click to have that way. And then you can also look at the program we have based on the seals on the CILC website. Um, another thing to think about is if um, you're looking at budgets or anything like that, a lot of times um, your federal organizations like the Smithsonian, um, your national parks, they're going to do free programming because they're federal organizations. And also sometimes organizations within your own state provide you a discount on programming um, because you're within their state boundaries. So it never hurts to ask, do you have openings or discounts when it comes to Title I or I'm close by or something like that. So, so at this time, I'm going to go ahead and quick stop seeing the program. Double check, I don't see anything in the chat. Paul, so it doesn't look like I have any questions. So I'm gonna then go look at the next thing I wanna talk about, which is, I'm um, gonna, I should quick stop. Does anyone have any questions about how to find virtual field trips on the CILC website? Real quick, uh, Tammy, I, I do have a question because yes. this has come up a couple of times with some of my teachers. Mm -hmm. um, they are, they are booking, you know, three or four sessions or they're, they're, they're kind of brand new at this and they just kind of maybe sometimes they just put that in the description. Hey, I have 150 kids. Can I, you know, do it all at one time? And that's understandable because this is kind of new. Um, is there any chance in the future that we'll see an update that would allow them to say multiple classes or multiple systems so they don't have to go through the entire startup again of, the, of each program to register? So there is kind of a in-between feature there that allows you to do that. That's not as simple as saying duplicate this, you know, request a little bit, but what you can do is if you were to click on a program right here and you go to book it. Put in your information while you want to be connecting. So it's kind of do it as an individual this time. When you fill in your, so this would be the first request. So my first hour of the day uh, is starting at 9 a.m. my time, and it goes to 9.45. So I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna put in that, if I need to, I guess I can do it on Monday also. And I'll put that in there. And then, get there. So my grade level 10, I have 27 in that class. If I go to the bottom right here, I'm going to add another request. Is it not going to? Oh, we have a little issue. I'll have to look at this. But if you click on, and I apologize, if you add another request, it looks like maybe it's just this particular program. I mean, it will drop down and put in another request and allows you to do all three of your um, hours or more all at the same time. And then when you hit submit, it takes those 
um, three different classrooms and separate them into three individual requests so that you can then connect with that content provider three different times. And it allows you then not to have to go next step and then go all the way in again. You can put it in that way. Does that help out a little bit, Paul? That is very helpful. It would be even better if it actually showed up. But I know I did it earlier today with a group of um, educators. I signed them up um, three different times for our program. So I'll look into why it's not working for some reason on the World War II one. <laughs> so let's then jump to um, other um, opportunities for um, interactive um, virtual field trips on CILC. So a new thing that CILC is doing this year, we have partnered with Zoom and we are providing two free programs a month. They're live streaming programs. So this is gonna be a little bit different for your classrooms. It's not gonna be you and your students in the classroom talking directly to the content provider doing a one-on-one -on -one interaction. This is where the content provider is going to be delivering a program to you and maybe 20, 30, 40, or 50 other classrooms at the same time. You're gonna be able, however, to see and hear them, and they'll be able to interact with you via a chat at the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar. So if I go to interactive content, Zoom live streaming events, I can click on that, and I'll be able to see the start of some of the programs that are listed on the web server right now. As I said, these are all free um, for CILC members. All you have to do is just click it on, fill in some information on the Zoom form, first name, last name, email address, um, grade level, and their school name, and then you'll be able to click submit and it will automatically send back in an email that the link to the webinar itself. There are some Fabulous programs looking into Center for Puppetry of Arts has one coming up. Um, this one's been a really popular one I've been seeing people sign up for. 10 Scariest Prehistoric Creatures by Royal Tyrell Museum of Paleontology up in Canada. Um, if you ever wanted to know anything about black hole in science, um, we have uh, University of Arizona is going to be um, joining us for that one. And then we have one about Turkey. Um, fossils, does it snow in the ocean? I guess we'll find out. I don't know for sure, but it's a great program to look at into. Um, sea turtles, careers in the NFL, um, marine mammal rescue, and seeds on the go right now. Those are just a very basic list. The list will expand to offer two free a month um, through the end of the year with that. So now that we know about virtual field trips, let's talk about the other opportunity that we have on CILC, and that is collaborations. So if I am an educator and I want my students to connect to another group of students in another part of the world, or maybe in another part of my state, or across the United States, I could find a partner out there. So if I go to collaborations and I click on find collaborations, I can search different topics, I can search grade levels, or I can scroll down and see who's out there right now. Um, so this one right here is a mystery box exchange. My class will send you an artifact box with clues from where we are located. Your students will try and solve. You will send us one, then we will meet via distance learning to share how we solved. I'm planning on October to November 20, uh, 2019. Um, so they're in New Jersey, this group is. So if you're a elementary teacher and you want to connect your students to this group, you could click on here, give a little bit more detail, and you'll be right away able to see the teacher's name, Nancy, right here. And you could look at their um, email address and start a connection with them to get it set up and going. This is a great way for your walls to expand. It's based on what fits into your curriculum, just like a virtual field trip. Um, you can meet with those students one time. You can meet with them monthly. Um, some great things I've seen is um, um, parent nights, where if you have a, you know, another school that you are connecting with and they're in China, um, they are, um, you know, not able to connect with you during the day because of how, you know, the time zones work. But what you could do is do some 
videos back and forth with each other, projects back and forth via email, and then also um, at night when you have your parent night, you can meet each other for the very first time live and have your those students' parents also meet their pen pals over in China if you wanted to. Um, so it is a great way to kind of expand um, your boundaries that we have. And so this is the um, collaborations is one way to go. You can find one. You can also, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. And I'll just make sure. There we go. Share right over there. When you, um, you can, so you can find one like that. If you're not seeing one that fits your needs, um, you can also go to collaborations and post a collaboration. It's absolutely free for you as a member on CILC. And what it's going to do is just ask for a title, how long this is going to be going on for, some details, and that collaboration will then be posted in our collaboration center for other members to search for, and it will go out in the newsletter for our 55,000 members to see in that weekly newsletter, and they may connect with you that way. Um, if you're thinking, oh, this is a great thing to do, I don't even know where to begin, don't worry. <laughs> You can go to collaborations and view past collaborations also. And that kind of gives you an opportunity to think about what other teachers have done that's really creative way. Um, like To Kill a Mockingbird, um, Lord of the Flies, Talk Show. I love this one. It's a very interesting book, but why not take it to the next level um, with another group of students? But you can look at politics, you know, touchy subject, but would be great for students to talk about their perspectives and what they're hearing and what's going on. You know, a lot of times we're afraid to open those doors, but the students handle it way better than we've ever thought and could take it so much further. And they remember, you know, connecting to someone else to talk about that. So you can definitely look into those areas as a way to look at um, past collaborations. Um, so at this time, I'm just going to quick double check. Is there any questions about collaborations on the website? Hey, I'm not going to ask a question, but I'm going to just uh, just share it because I've had some success with teachers uh, previously um, doing collaborations. And one thing we found is the more details, the more information they put in, the more likely they're going to have matches. Um, one of the issues that we had run into in the past was what to do when you have so many people contact you more than what you can work with. And the great part about that is to just kind of even share each other's information with each other so that you can have multiple pods of that same project running between teachers because many times just having that opportunity to um, have the idea is very helpful. I like bringing that up. Thank you so much, Paul. It's, it's so great to know that there's teachers that are that popular that they have to turn down opportunities, but they can definitely connect them with other people. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a couple other features to take advantage of on your dashboard. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one last time. And what do you want to do um, is to go to my dashboard and on this little box that says my favorites and catalogs to the left of your collaborations if you were to post them you can always search in there there's create a custom catalog and this is a great way for you to work with your partner teachers um, and that you can decide um, do a little search but if i choose zoom i'm in second grade i want programs that are about science so that's what we're emphasizing this year i'm going to look at um, plant plants, because that's an area I struggle in and I don't want to think about. I'm going to narrow that search down and when I look at my catalog, so I'm going to say, you know, we have a really generous, really generous budget this year, so I'm going to say any amount. And I usually tell teachers, open it up, try for rainbows and unicorns, and then narrow it down a little bit if you need to. Um, we don't, we're not going to narrow it down to state. And when I do my catalog, it's going to pop back some information. I want to see the target audience, the disciplines, the description, the cost, program length, and the standards on which I would have. And I'm going to name this catalog plants. So I'm going to go ahead and save catalog or view it. 
And it, what it's going to do is it's going to go through the whole database and it's going to pop up all the different programs that fit my needs. So I'll be able to scroll down with all of that and just look at them, bam, bam, bam. Now, some of you are wondering, well, what's the whole point of doing that? I can do that in the search menu. A great thing about it is if you go over to your My Dashboard, view um, my custom catalogs, I can find my plants right here, hit view, and take this little link and send it over to another teacher and then they can also see what's going on. So you can, if you're a media specialist and you're going to be, you know, finding some programming for a group of second graders and they say, this is the area we want to do, that's a way for you to say, here's everything you got, send it out, let me know what works for you and I'll go ahead and look. So at this time, I think I covered quite a bit, but definitely take advantage of looking at your dashboard and seeing those new programs out there. We also have um, professional development um, on the CILC website that you can look at with your professional learning network and a lot more. But at this time, I'm gonna stop it, double check if there's any questions. So Tammy, I wanna thank you so much for the great presentation that you did. And hopefully we'll be seeing a whole slew of res reservations coming in and uh, we'll go from there. So thank you very much, everybody. And with that, I'm going to stop my recording.